Hello and welcome to Asset Flip, a brand new show and this is its pilot episode. Thanks for tuning in and I can't wait to share what we're doing here. So what is Asset Flip? Each month Epic releases on the marketplace free assets for you to download and add to your library. In Asset Flip I challenge myself to create a new project or demo or prototype in just 6 hours using only the content that is released for free on the marketplace each month. There are typically 5 pieces of assets and these are, can only be used as well as the starter content and any template content that may be with Unreal. During the challenge you get to see me use these assets and review them for their use and how they can be used and changed and manipulated for your own projects. In this episode you'll get a breakdown and overview of me working on this project over the course of the 6 hours. And for my Patreon members you get access to the project files as well as an extended look video where I go through and explain how I manipulated some of the assets for their use in this project. So let's get started by having a look at the assets we've been provided this month. So let's take a look at what we've been given on offer this month. So we have this in-game level editor, let's check that out. And what looks alright here, so okay, create levels in your game, you do not need to know the blueprints for it to set it up. Okay, so it looks like a project based uh, system to build uh, environments uh, using these pieces inside a game of your own making. Could be quite cool, could be something we could do. Um, Okay. Interesting. Could maybe do something with that. Let's have a look and go back to the next one. So also we have the root motion guide. The root motion guide. Now this sounds interesting. The root motion guide helps you use root motion animation in your game, and it provides various tools for using mixed mode animation. Very handy. Um, as it will be for this project, I don't know. But um, I like the look at this. This seems interesting to try out at least. And uh, see what we think of that. Uh, okay, so you can. I made us use mixed motion animations again. Helps you use root motion animation in your game. Such the appropriate root motion animation interpolates to smoothly perform root motion, and it provides a variety of tools using mixed motion animations in your game. So it looks like one like brace tool, uh, like one uh, embrace tool there to handle uh, um, Mixamo itself, because Mixamo is a pain to get sorted into Unreal. So that looks like it might be a decent thing as a solver for that. Uh, we also have this modular sci-fi office. Okay, so this is our environment based asset for this month. We've got modular sci-fi office. This office is part of a Skyfall restoration complex, which was built by the SAR Genomic Gen Genomics Incorporated in 2045. Okay, so this is a very pretty looking office. Now, fitting this in with the level editor might be a bit tricky. Uh, just because obviously the styles, at least in the screenshots provided, are very, very different. So I wonder if we can just use one of them or somehow think of a clever way to combine the two. Okay, let's check out what next we've got. Uh, we've also got advanced female customization. Now, this does look interesting. Uh, Ultimate character customization tool allows you to generate 10,000 different female characters, off them up, and texture their cloth all inside Unreal, then load them to your project brought to you by the Hero's Journey. About the man mannequin skeleton. Okay, so I'm guessing then. I'm guessing by this is that it will generate an asset for you that will then export out and you can put it into another project. Possibly. Interesting to see how that handles that. Um, okay, we could probably do something with that. Uh, in fact, I think we will do something with that. And finally, we've got Lowell's Eight Elements. And this looks like it's a particle system stuff. Oh, very pretty particle system. Okay, so combine versions of his four elements and four more elements packages with additional improvements and optimizations. So these look, look very nice. So instantly, I'm thinking of something witch related. So we've got these female characters we can do stuff with, and we've got these magic spells and stuff. So I definitely think we've got a witch based sort of gameplay going on here. Um, as for the actual setup for where and what the game is actually going to be, I don't know yet. I think we have to see how we get uh, on with the office complex thing and also the level editor, see how they look. Uh, but these look very pretty. I'm um, looking forward to trying some of these out. Excellent. Okay. So there are our five assets we are allowed to use alongside our starter content. So let's get started and flip them.
So the very first thing I wanted to work on was messing around with the character creator, see what I could do with it, and see the kind of features of it. And it was quite impressive really, you can change all the outfits, the colours, you can even change the materials on the outfits. The default texture though was a bit weird, where sometimes it would be too large in scale, so you'd often have to scale that down pretty much every time, uh, which was quite annoying, uh, but we eventually got round to using it in a, in a decent way. And here I am just trying out a mess about with the menu system for it um, because I was trying to see if there was a way to bring the character that I made into a game. Uh, so I created a test level and started creating uh, this environment for me to use and use this character inside this environment. The problem I had though was the character that they made in the character creator doesn't actually have any functionality on it whatsoever. Uh, it's literally just a visual thing. Uh, so. And also a way of like, oh, how can I make the character actually bring forward my designs and, and so forth? How can I make use of the save system to bring forward what I had already made? And it just it just couldn't get working. It was a real mess to try and figure out uh, to the point where I eventually just went down and manually set all the meshes and all the colouring on the meshes as well to match exactly what I wanted it to do. Uh, as it just wouldn't work. Um, this was probably the biggest hurdle to encounter. Um, there was loads of issues. Uh, it just just kept getting stuck on trying to get things working where it's clashing with the save system and what it wanted to do and without having to redo all the code, obviously. Now, looking around the file system, it had these little blob creatures that was part of the uh, elements pack. And I thought they'd be quite good to use as sort of the enemy. So I wanted to do this like witch-like game where you've got a witch character and these little blob slime enemies to fight against. So here I am testing out the level editor and seeing what I can and can't do with it. And it's quite impressive really, it's quite a good little tool. Uh, it does have a couple of limitations such as the grid base uh, movement and stuff like that. And also you can't change the size of the grid, um, uh, individual grid units. You can only change the size of the overall grid. So you are limited in that aspect, so you can't do anything like fine positioning of stuff. Uh, you are kind of locked into that. Um, which would have been very useful for things like the trees, the doors and so forth to get fine-tuned movement on that. But you had this uh, cool interaction system with the buttons and doors and you can set up some basic gameplay in it. It's quite good, it's quite cool. Uh, but what was really neat about it was it's quite easy to actually update and change it to include your own custom stuff like what I'm doing here on this data table. So I'm adding the slime enemies to this so I can place them into the level as well as the usual stuff that came with the level editor. So you could theoretically add more stuff to this as much as you really like really to uh, to the level editor quite seamlessly really. It wasn't too difficult. So here I am testing out the um, earth spell and I was trying to figure out how that was working and so forth and I found that the issue was that the earth spells that came with the pack were homing already and I didn't want it to be homing so I had to go in and edit them quite a bit to get them to work as intended. So the slimes now needed some AI so here I'm making some AI for them and they're very basic AI they're literally going to stand still until they see you and when they do see you they'll start sliming towards, towards you. And when they get close enough, they're going to launch themselves at you like an attack. Uh, so they jump towards you and try and knock you out of the way. So I set them up in my test environment to test out all my spells and pickups and enemies. I use this a lot to try and figure some stuff out. And it seemed like the slimes were working quite well. Um, all I had to do then was work out on the attack. And as I said, I wanted to do a launch attack. And I had some issues with this. Um, and it eventually led to me having to turn off their controller and launch them and then turn the controller on because the controller movement was, being over, was overriding their position, uh, which you're seeing here very quickly on the screen, I'm aware. But they are slowing down in midair when they're trying to jump if they're chasing after you. So. After turning off their controller and getting them to move uh, unaided and then return the controller back on, they got them jumping quite well and launching themselves at you uh, as a cool little attack there. So 
So I wanted the spells to be pickups that you wanted to find in the environment and to dy dynamically find them in the environment as well. So you'll find them uh, in the environment and they'll give you the spells and also unlock the end. And the spells that came with the elemental thing was quite cool as it came with a load of Niagara effects already used. So I wanted to reuse those same assets and to create these sort of hovering stationary pickup points. So here I am creating the hovering animation for them going up and down. I'm putting this fireball as a tester to see this fireball float up and down uh, on the same spot. And it was it worked really well. Um, it was a bit too uh, simple so I added some base elemental fire to it as well to add some extra effects so you can see the little ground radial effect happening here uh, like so. And I started working on other elements as well so here's the water one and getting that one in place and resizing it, scaling it, rotating it to get to the right shape scale as intended for that particular uh, spell itself. Uh, then here comes the uh, the earth one and the earth one's very different because I wanted it to be like sort of a nest of rock um, so I couldn't use the uh, the particle effect because the particle effect had a loop on it that changed a lot of stuff. So what I wanted to do was to keep it static. So I put static meshes in and I used this rock here and added a float to this instead and gave it some simple smoke. I think that came with the starter content to give it that appearance of dust coming off, this, off the uh, earth stone. Um, there you go. And then the final one I worked on was the wind stone and the wind stone uh, the windstone, the wind power up, sorry, uh, which used like sort of the vortex sort of appearance. Uh, this one edit, had to edit a lot of the particle effect system to stop it from doing a loop. I wanted it to be consistent, so I went around and edited all the emitters to turn off their looping behaviors uh, so they could just uh, uh, remain in the environment. But I'd fire once and then disappear, which is not what we wanted. So after editing all this, I uh, got the final effect uh, of the like sort of tornado uh, pickup effect. So there are the four spells all together uh, as pickups, and um, yeah, I think that I was quite impressed with how well they looked, uh, and it relatively didn't take that long. Uh, just using the elemental pack that came with the assets, um, it was quite quick and easy to set up. So as I said I wanted them to be dynamic so I wanted them to randomly spawn in the environment. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a nav mesh uh, that's pre put into the level. So when I build a level like this it's actually setting the nav mesh for this environment as well because I made it generate the nav mesh dynamically in the project settings. This allowed me to uh, in the start of the game to place these objects based on the nav mesh position. So to make sure I could reach the actual points, I made it only spawn it in reachable in, nav in reachable positions, sorry, not navigable positions. That way I guaranteed I could reach it and it wouldn't be just off the center. So if you're creating your own levels, you wouldn't actually break the game by making it spawn somewhere you didn't want it to. So next was to make some UI, uh, so we could use uh, a way of tracking what ones we have got and what ones we're currently using. So I found this graphic we're gonna use, I don't know which pack it came from, probably the uh, elemental pack. And I just repurposed it for this uh, material here, for this little icon. And I'm here I'm building up the UI of the four elemental effects, starting off with the fire one, and then working my way down for water, earth, and wind. And these serve two purposes. One was to show which one you've got currently selected, and also which one were uh, left to find, because you have to find all four of them to open up the gate to end the level. And they also serve the further function, which you'll see later on, is the cooldown. So once you fire the spell off, it put it on the cooldown list, and you'll see a cooldown progress bar happen in its place. But this is me working on the selection tool, and this is basically just using an array. And when I scroll the wheel, it'll just change which item in the array I was looking at based on this index. And so that's been passed through uh, from the uh, controller through to the UI uh, later on. So here we are just adding the widget to the screen and turning that, turning that communication between the player character and the uh, widget. So now we can select which one we want to select by using just the scroll wheel of the mouse. So here I'm testing out all the spells and trying to get them to do stuff. Um, so the idea is that each of the spell would have a different effect on the slimes. So the very first one we worked on was the water one. And the water one was a basic knockback. 
So after setting this up, it basically would launch the one it hit backwards based upon its own velocity. So taking the velocity of the water and applying that velocity to uh, the character it hit. The next one was the wind one. The wind one was really cool and basically it's like a tornado so it would go along the floor and it would anyone it grabbed it would grab them and take it with it so you can push things away uh, using the uh, tornado. It was a really neat effect. I really enjoyed the look of that one. It was really fun to play around with that. And next we worked on the earth one and the earth one was quite cool in that it would hold them still and all this sort of like rooted earth effect going around it so I spawned in these earth spires using the park system that came with it I didn't do much more than just edit the looping animation for it so they all spawned in and stayed still whilst it was holding them in place so you got that spawning action but not the despawning bit and then the fire one, I wanted to actually kill the slimes with the fire one. So I made them set on fire by just attaching the basic fire uh, particle effect that came in the starter content. And that attaches to them when they get hit and applies some damage to them. And when enough damage has been done to them, they will disappear and, uh, and die. And here I am setting up these cooldowns for the various spells and their, their effects. And then here's the cooldown system in play. The cooldown list is a bunch of actors added to an array. So when we cast a spell, it adds it to an array. And after some amount of time, it will then remove itself from that same array, allowing it to be recast. So just doing a little check there to see if the spell already was in the array or not. And here we are doing the animation, uh, the death animation and effect for the blob. So that when their health reached a certain point, they would just die and spawn this sort of dark cloud spiral effect. And the final touch was building this menu system. So just made a simple menu that had the elements on the screen and a black background and adding the buttons for the play game and quit game and eventually the create game as well so you could have a simple menu to get into the game it kind of just tied it all together for the final product And let me introduce you to the final product. This is Magic Run. The end of the game is to find all four elements and reach the goal. Each element will give you a new spell as you unlock them as well. And the game has a couple of features. You've got three levels pre-made for you in the play game. Or you can create your own level and it will dynamically place them for you. So I'm going to go to play game. And we hit the generate button. But once it gets into that, we get our first level. And you collect all the spells. And there's two right off the bat. We've got water and earth. Now it is random uh, and it will choose a random point in reachable uh, space so you can make sure you can get it uh, and we'll showcase a couple of these off so water is a knockback sends them knock back here earth is a lock so it roots them into place like so they can't move and wind is a tornado which takes them away so you can use that to knock them off the edge here Fire is a damaging one, so it will burn them and it will set fire to them. And as it does that, on, let's get down here and show this properly. Let's do it to this one up here. And set fire to this one, it's it, it catches fire and it does damage. And it will eventually die as well if we hit it enough times. And you can see the goals open up there because I've got all, all the spells here. So we go in here and it'll load up the next level for us, taking us to level two. And off we go and so on and so forth. And so there's three levels and uh, it, yeah, it works all right. There are a couple of limitations. For example, the levels that you see here can't go with the packaged game so because the level editor 
does not allow for the ability to export the levels as something other than a save game file you are limited in that you can only you can't share your save game file essentially unless you tell and instruct people to put it into a save game directory um, so that breaks the play game part of the actual thing but you can still create your own levels and so forth okay uh, we're missing one we're we? missing wind oh there it is Go and that open up the gate. So let's go find that gate. And so overall, it's about six hours worth of work. So I used three of the five free assets that came this month. Uh, I used the uh, female character creator, the particle effects, and the level editor. Now the particle effects were probably my favourite part as you were able to basically take them apart, tear them uh, apart from each other and create something new. That's why I created these four different elements that you see here, these pickups. By just utilising those particle effects and just tweaking them here and there, it's quite easy to get something like this loaded. Um, the thing I disliked the, uh, the most was probably the female character creator as it was too limiting you literally was just a character creator you couldn't use it the character for anything it wasn't playable at all it was literally just a character creator um but it did show how to save it and how to um use different meshes and so forth but there are lots of problems with it there are lots of issues i found trying to get usable in a game uh to a point where i basically had to gut it mostly from scratch the level editor was kind of cool um and it what i liked about it was that it was quite easy and quite quick to set up to include your own custom bits in it so i was able to place the little blob enemies around uh, quite freely and that took literally like a couple of minutes to set up um, by just editing some data values so you can easily see how you can import your own creations into it and add them have little thumbnails and so forth to add these items to the world as well so it made it a lot easier than i thought it'd be to create interesting levels uh, of your own design and it's something that's probably the most promising going forward out of the three that I, I tried out uh, in this project at least. Uh, the other two uh, assets, there wasn't really a place for them in this. So for example, the root motion thing, I didn't have any animations to work on apart from the ones in the starter content. So I was kind of limiting in what I could actually use that for in this sense. And the office was fine, but it was literally, it's literally just an office, a high tech looking office uh, asset wise. And I could have used some of it, I'm sure, but in the time frame we had, um, we didn't really mess about with it too much. Uh, but there you go. And that brings us to the end of the first episode of Asset Flip. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to let us know in the comments below how, what you thought of the episode and what you think about the series in general and what you'd like to see more of in the future. What changes would you like to see? I'm open all ears to you. Thanks again to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you want to show your support with me, head to the patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you get access to many benefits such as early access videos and project files. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next month for next month's Asset Flip. Bye everyone.